We have with us Mr. Amitabh Khan, CEO of Niti Aayog. So welcome to International Blockchain Congress 2018. Our audience is very eager to hear from you. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 Honorable uh, Minister, Mr. K.T. Rama Rao, uh, Mr. Jesh Ranjan, all the other dignitaries. Uh, you know, I was looking forward to being in uh, Hyderabad uh, and joining you today for this uh, unique conference. Unfortunately, there's a major review being taken by the Prime Minister here, so I have to be personally present as I have to make the, all the presentations. So my personal apologies for not joining you uh, personally. Let me uh, begin by congratulating the government of Telangana and the Nucleus Vision organizing team on pulling off this gathering of technologists and entrepreneurs from all around the world and from India. Even virtually, it's uh, great to be back in Hyderabad after the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017. Telangana has always been a leading state in terms of frontier technology adoption and that is why Niti signed the first government-to-government -government partnership on frontier technologies with the government of Telangana. Blockchain is often drowned in unnecessary jargons, hashes, miners, tokens, nodes, hash graphs, etc. But put simply and functionally, blockchain can bring in ease of collaboration for enterprises and the ease of living for our citizens by bringing in transparency across government to government, government to business and government to consumer interfaces. This is particularly important for democracies and free markets. Price, the signal of a market, is able to incentivize the various entities to collaborate by thinking selfishly of maximizing their own gains. However, in practice, there are disagreements that can potentially occur between the various parties. Traditionally, the way to reduce such disputes and to resolve them was through intermediaries. Blockchain and other distributed technologies are powerful because they allow multiple parties to collaborate and come to a consensus without any need for a third party. Blockchains are the technological evolution of the concept of Swaraj enunciated by our freedom fighters. When Gandhi spoke about it, it meant freedom from the British. When Jai Prakash Narayan spoke about it, it meant freedom from oppression. The Prime Minister, Mr. Narayan Modi, has brought in a paradigm shift in the trust equation between the government and the citizens with the advent of self-certification. Blockchain technology, when correctly applied, takes the concept of self-certification and enlarges its, enlarges its scopes to multiple groups. It can help in bringing the trust deficit between corporations, between citizens and government. To my mind, blockchain can be a key driver for ease of doing business. <coughs> The challenge for India is to break into the top 50 of the world bankies of doing business. In the last two years, we have jumped up 42 ranks, which is extremely rare for a country. A large country like India, we moved up from 142 to 140 ranks. Two indicators are holding us down. Enforcement of contracts, where we are 164 out of 190 and registering property where we are 154 out of 190. About three crore cases are currently pending in various courts of India. These include 44.5 lakh cases in high courts and 2.6 crore 
lower court cases. 100 cases every hour without eating or sleeping, it would take more than 35 years to catch up. 57% of district and subordinate court cases take more than 10 years to dispose of. Two-thirds of all civil cases in district court relate to registering property or lands. And therefore, blockchain technology can enable us to make a quantum jump and find solutions to the big log jam in courts. A number of use cases exist, not just in developed economies, but also in countries like Thailand and Ghana. The land administration project in Ghana is attempting to use blockchain technology to solve land dispute problems. The state-owned postal service Thailand Post is leveraging blockchain technology to improve its supply chain across all touch points from warehouse processes to delivery services. But there are several challenges. Blockchain, or more generally, distributed ledger technology is a foundational technology just like the internet. Unlike artificial intelligence, this technology will not be visible to citizens and consumers, but rather work seamlessly in the background to achieve efficiencies in government and business functioning if applied correctly. It is essential to understand where blockchain technology can be used. It is even more important to understand where it's at little or no value. The efforts of state governments and those looking to implement solutions need to be directed towards use cases that significantly exploit the benefits of blockchain technology. The need for framework to choose use cases is important. As with new revolutionary technology, there is tendency to force fit this to applications and will require a strong framework to decide the benefits of blockchain as it pertains to every use case, at least at this early stage. Most implementations across public sector institutions globally are in early research or trial phases with only 6% in live mode. I wanted to speak a little bit about the role of government in this. The government has to play a leading role in allowing the application of blockchain technology. As per a recent survey, 13% of the identified use cases globally are in government and public courts. This is only behind, this is behind only banking as the largest sector for potential application. There are regulatory hurdles. How the government can enable application of blockchain is critical. As the government, we need to step up to make it easier to apply blockchain to pressing problems in areas such as disbursement, land record, health records, and countries around the world have had, have had to improve and change their legal systems to make themselves amenable to blockchain implement, implementation. Georgia, for example, is one of just three countries to have implemented blockchain in real land transactions. Developing of skills in the area, uh, there is a huge challenge of skilled manpower. And I think it's important to have a lot of young people like all of you assembled here today to specialize in the area of blockchain. This is an area of the future and many, many jobs will get created. So those of you who are experts, please mentor others. And those who are, who are getting into this, this is the area of the future. We need to establish skilling mechanisms to train students in the foundational technologies underpinning blockchain development and establish continuous learning. We also need to find ways to make it easier for companies to set up in India and build indigenous talent. In, there's a huge emphasis of blockchain in the social sector. In agriculture, blockchain can radically transform agriculture sector by revamping the utility of the electronic markets 
uh, ENAMs by creating an audit trail of all farmer produce and removing the mistrust between farmer and the Mundi intermediaries. The blockchain applications can be used to explore certification of organic produce, thus increasing marketability to foreign markets. If you look at energy, application of blockchain can be used to create a verifiable life cycle of an EV battery to ease the ability of swapping on vehicles. In health recording, health records of patients on blockchain to allow sharing of only required data across hospitals and primary health centers. We have we in Niti Aayog have taken several measures to disrupt projects and these are many disruptive projects being undertaken by Niti Aayog. Firstly, on transforming land registry system using blockchain, Niti Aayog is an advanced stage of implementing a proof of concept plot pilot in Chandigarh to assess the technology potential to solve the problem of India's land-based registry system. Two-thirds of India's Judicial lag jail in civil cases, as I mentioned, is caused due to land-related disputes. We are working with the judiciary to find disruptive ways to expedite land and property registrations, mutations, and enable a corruption and real-free system of smart transactions. On, we are working on revamping fertilizer subsidy distribution system. Niti Aayog has collaborated with Gujarat Narmada Valley Fertilizer Corporation to build a blockchain based system to trace fertilizer sales to farmers and distribute subsidy to manufacturers. We have also embarked on pilot towards safe privacy preserving artificial intelligence with Berlin Net Corporation utilizing blockchain technology. The feasibility study can help inform the design of future digital infrastructure for government. Potentially, machine learning algorithms can be trained on data without data ever being exposed to central authority. I think there's also a need to use blockchain to track and trace and solve the menace of fraudulent drugs. And therefore, in collaboration with Apollo Hospital and Oracle, Niti Aayog is working on putting the pharmaceutical supply chain on blockchain to ensure complete traceability of drugs as they move from manufacturers to consumers and protect our citizens from the ills of fraud medication. Niti has also conducted multiple hackathons on blockchain technology in which innovators were encouraged to design solutions such as privacy preserving, artificial intelligence, agriculture supply chain, tamper proof, EV battery swapping, insurance and many more. I'm delighted that all of you have assembled in Hyderabad under the leadership of Mr. KTR, who is the most dynamic minister we have in India. And under his dynamic leadership, uh, his state of Telangana will take the lead in taking blockchain and making India the champion of blockchain technology. I wish all of you all the best and a great future. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan. Your presence uh, is, miss, is being missed here. But thank you for your warm wishes and regards. We wish you a great day ahead, sir. Thank you very much.